All right, give people a chance to log on here. Um, the, uh, as most of you probably know, the remains of Gan and Stauk were found today in Florida, um, tentatively the remains of Gan and Stauk, but I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that everybody knows it was uh, in fact Gannon. I'm hoping I'm not echoing. So I'm gonna count on y'all to let me know if I'm echoing. But I wanted to go live. I did a live on Facebook earlier, but I know that um, I tried to download that video to share on YouTube and for some reason it, it doesn't work. So I figured I would do another live on YouTube just to kind of talk for a few minutes about Gannon Stauk. And uh, for those of you who are not aware, they have found remains today in Florida that they do believe are the remains of Gannon Stauk, which definitely threw people for a loop. The fact that he was found in Florida when he went missing from Colorado. So, um, you know, we had a conversation on Facebook and a lot of people are saying they really believe that stepmom Letitia Stauk had to have had help because how in the world could she possibly have gotten Gannon's body from Colorado to Florida when, you know, she reported him missing on the 27th and police obviously were, were watching, you know, what she was doing. It doesn't make any sense. So, um, my, my thought process is that she definitely had to have had help. I cannot imagine that she did all that by herself in the four hour time frame that she got in the vehicle with Gannon at 10 15 in the morning and, you know, returned four hours later without him. Um, hi Jane, how are you? Anyhow, so yeah, so I just wanted to kind of talk about that. Um, there was a lady that posted on social media earlier and she said her sister was the one that took the 911 call and that the person who found the remains found Gannon's remains in a suitcase, which is horrible. And um, they have brought more charges now against the stepmother, against Letitia. They say that now that they have um, Gannon's remains, that they they do know now that a um, a gun was involved, a knife, and an object that you know caused um, blunt force trauma, which is just horrible, and that it is now without question, you know, they are moving forward with premeditated first degree murder based on the evidence that they have now that they have his body. So God only knows what this poor boy went through. But I definitely, I, I don't understand how in the world he he was found in Florida, which it just, it's, it's throwing me for a loop. And, you know, I've said since the beginning that I feel as though, you know, and it, this is pure speculation, but I feel like when she took him in the truck that day on the 27th in the morning when he went missing, that she drove him somewhere and that he left at that point and got in a car or a truck with someone else who then, you know, um, took him. And the fact that she, that, that the remains were now found in Florida has me really thinking that that, that could very well be the case. Um, law enforcement said, you know, they're, they're wanting to know if anybody saw Letitia in Florida between February 3rd and February 5th. So I don't know why they have that time frame. But that is the time frame that they're saying they they are wanting to know if she was in Florida and if anybody saw her to come forward. But the thing that's thrown me for a loop here is the fact that he was reported missing on the 27th, right? So she reported him missing. How in the world did they not watch her every move, you know, at that point? How in the world could she have possibly taken his body, like gone and taken his body from wherever location it was at? and transported him down to Florida without being seen. Like, how could that possibly have happened? I mean, surely they were watching her, right? So uh, everything everything I know about this, which is not very much considering that there's a, there's a gag order on this, leads me to believe that she had help and that somebody else took him from the vehicle that, that he was in with Letitia. And he was then, you know, he then transported and went with someone else. I just, I just keep going back to that. Hi, Robert. I am hanging in there. How are you doing? <laughs> are you quarantined for this coronavirus? My five-year-old's been home from school. And uh, who is a lot of talking 24-7? <laughs> but I'm happy. I'm happy that I have him home with me. But but yeah, Robert, we're talking about, you know, the, the Gannon Stauk case and, and the fact that they found remains in Florida today that they believe are Gannon. And I don't understand how in the world 
Letitia could have moved his body from somewhere in Colorado or whatever to Florida without law enforcement seeing her doing that, right? I mean, they had to have been following everything that she was doing after he was reported missing, or at least you would think they did, that they were, right? Um, the rumor is that he was found in a suitcase. I don't know if that's true or not, but it does fall in line with what originally, you know, law enforcement said that they were looking for a suitcase. Remember they had that landfill in Colorado and they, they were searching for a suitcase. So um, I don't know if, if maybe there was, you know, other video from the night before or the same day that just wasn't released to the public where people saw Letitia getting into the truck or putting a suitcase in the truck or something the night before. But, um, but there definitely was reason to believe that they, that they were looking for him in a suitcase. So, um, I don't know. Um, I just cannot fathom how one person could have pulled something like that off and actually gotten him to Florida without anybody seeing or noticing something strange, especially, you know, and I, and I don't want to, I hate saying this, it's so graphic, but especially when you think about the fact that, you know, they would have, there would have been an odor at some point, right? So if, if she rented a car and you bring the rental car back, wouldn't they be like, well, what did you do in our car? Like, what, what is that smell? Or I don't know. I just, I don't understand how she could have done this without having somebody else helping her. You know, she's just one person. Um, and she was only gone for four hours. That's the thing that, that I don't understand. If, if she had been gone for like eight hours, there would have been more time for her to do this. But within that four hour window that she was gone, she went to Petco twice, which was about 30 minutes from her house. Right. Um, there on the witness list, there's a subway sandwich shop, play it against sports, a Coles. So there's a whole bunch of places that apparently she went to that day, um, in a four hour period which doesn't really leave much room for a, a murder and a cover up and cleaning herself up. To me, it doesn't make sense for that to be the case without somebody else being involved. So um, we did this Facebook live, you know, a little while ago, and some people are saying that they're, they're curious as to whether or not Landon's husband, soon to be ex-husband was maybe having an affair with Letitia and was involved and helped her with, with Gannon. And I'll tell you, you know, the more I think about that, the more I wonder if that may not be the case because, well, think about it, right? So Landon was married to Al and they had Gannon and his little sister, Lena. Letitia had an affair with Al, right? Now, Landon is married to this guy, Mike, who's to say she didn't have an affair with him. Um, you know, just because she's married doesn't mean that that she has any any morals or values. Obviously, she doesn't. She just murdered a little boy. But there was an interesting thing because Landon's ex-husband or soon-to-be ex-husband was in that Letitia Stauk support group on Facebook. And he was advocating for her. He was saying like that she didn't do anything, that she was innocent. And my first thought was, well, you don't know that you don't really know her that well, just because you're married to her ex-husband to her husband's ex-wife doesn't mean you know her like that, but maybe he did know her like that. Right. Um, it just seemed odd that, that he was advocating for the person who was last seen a lot, you know, last seen with his stepson when he was alive, it didn't make much sense. Um, and then there was speculation on the Facebook discussion that we just had that he may have been in Florida for work. So if he was in Florida for work and Gannon's body was found in Florida, you know what I'm saying? So I have some questions. I'm really, really curious now about that relationship that she had with Landon's soon to be or, or now ex-husband. I don't know if they're divorced or not, but it definitely raises some questions, right? I don't understand. I mean, she couldn't physically have, have been in, in all of those places at the same time by herself it's impossible. It's, it's, it's not possible. Um, I don't understand. I'm not sure why law enforcement is saying that they think she may have been in Florida between February 3rd and February 5th, but they have those dates for, for a reason. Right. Um, and I guess, you know, I don't know, you know, I think like, okay, she drove to South Carolina, but at that point, law enforcement was already searching for Gannon. So if she had hit him, you know, hit his body in a suitcase somewhere, 
you would think that between the time that he was reported missing and the time that she went to South Carolina, that they would have seen or found something, right? Um, but anyhow, let's for argument's sake say that they didn't see something and she had his body somewhere. And then she decided she was going to drive to South Carolina. Maybe she met somebody in South Carolina who then drove Gannon's remains to Florida. Who knows? Um, but I just, I keep going back in my mind to the idea that that she met somebody the day that he was reported missing and they, and at that point, Gannon got out of the vehicle from that she was in with Letitia and got into a vehicle with somebody else. Um, Jane, I don't think he got to Florida the day he went missing. I think she killed him that day and hid him overnight and got the rental car, picked him up and went to Florida. But the thing was, see, that's the thing. Like it would have to have been, she would have had to have had enough time to get to Florida and get back. And that wouldn't be possible because she did the interview with the news the next day at her house in, in Colorado. Right. Um, so time wise, she wouldn't have physically had enough time to, to do that. That's what's, that's why I'm so confused about all of this. The other thing too, is, you know, she only had the rental car for one day and just, just the amount of miles from Colorado to Florida, you would not be able to do that in one day and get back. It's impossible. It, it just, it's not possible. Um, I don't understand, you know, I, I, again, I just, I keep going back to the fact that maybe somebody else took him, you know, Letitia had him in, in a vehicle. I don't know if she had him where he had passed away or if he was still alive, but I just feel like at some point she, she had Gannon in her vehicle and somebody else took Gannon. And, and from that point forward, you know, Gannon was, was with somebody else. I, I, I keep going back to that. And I don't know. I mean, again, this is just complete speculation on my part. There's a gag order. We know very little, but just from what little I do know, it just doesn't make sense that she could have actually gotten to Florida and gotten back. Also, if they were watching her, like watching what she was doing, wouldn't they have seen her go back to wherever she hit his body? And, and wouldn't they have watched what she was doing? It doesn't make any sense to me. So I don't know. Um, and, you know, other people go and they, they say that they feel like maybe her, her daughter Harley was involved. I don't think so. I think that her daughter was not involved. I think her daughter thinks she's crazy too. And I think she's probably scared of her mom. That's just my, my take on it, but I could be wrong. Um, but I don't know, you know, now that they're saying that there was a gun involved, a knife and some sort of object that, you know, was used for, um, blunt trauma, blunt force trauma, it, it makes you wonder like, you know, did, did she beat him? And then he didn't, you know, wasn't able to, to sustain the injuries and he passed away or, or was he, you know, still alive. And she knew that, you know, she couldn't take him to the hospital or the doctor because they would arrest her on child abuse charges. So she, I hate to say it like this, but finished the job somehow, um, or had someone else finished the job for her. I, I don't know, but but I, I just, I don't think that it's possible that she would have been able to pull this off by herself. Not, not in the time frame that she had to work with. I just, I don't see it. Um, there was a, a post on Facebook and uh, it was from a T. Stauk profile. Now, I don't know if that was legitimately her profile or not. A lot of people believe that it was. And it was the same profile that posted the video of her talking to Gannon Sunday night when, you know, apparently the candle fell and the fire started. So, um, so at some point she definitely had access to the account and it was her. So, but I don't know if this was her or if she was hacked, but there was a post that she posted that she was at the Daytona races in Florida. Um, and then it came down, that post was deleted really quickly, but people got screenshots of it before it was taken down. So if that's true, if that was truly Letitia on her profile that posted that, then at some point she was in Florida, right? Um, and people are saying that Landon's ex-husband or soon to be ex-husband was in Florida for work. So who's to say that, you know, he didn't meet her in South Carolina and drive Gannon's body to Florida, or who's to say he didn't meet her in Colorado and drive Gannon's body to Florida. Nobody really knows much of anything, right? Um, and with the little bit of information that law enforcement is able to give us with this this gag order in place, it's really kind of hard to to put those pieces together and figure out what the hell happened here. But um, 
but they did they did charge her at this point now with premeditated first degree murder and they said that they are able to do that based on the fact that they have additional evidence as to what did take place now that they have his his remains so they they obviously know something we don't know but um I'm, I'm I'm curious if they think she acted alone or or if they think that she had somebody help her. They didn't say, and I would imagine they're not going to say unless another arrest is made. But I'm, I just I again I just don't see how she could have pulled this off completely by herself, with you know, law enforcement and the FBI and you know everybody just I mean they were full force investigating looking for this little boy and I don't think for a second that they would have missed her going somewhere to pick up his body that she hid somewhere to move it somewhere else. I don't think they would have been that. Um, I, I just, I think they did their due diligence, I guess is what I'm saying. And I don't think that they would have dropped the ball that way. I just can't see them doing that. That's like basic one Oh one police, you know, policing stuff. You just, you know, surely they followed her around and saw what she was doing. So I, I, just, I don't know. Um, Jane, if you, if you, you say you think that she killed him um, that day and hid him overnight, if, if let's just for argument's sake, say that that happened, where do you think that she hid him? I'm curious about that. And the other thing too, is if she beat him with, or, or you know, she had a knife or, you know, or something like that. When she came back the day that, um, that she left with him at 10, 15 in the morning, the Monday, the 27th, and she came back four hours later, she, she didn't have like blood all over her or anything like that. When she got out of the truck on the video, at least you could see she didn't. Right. So, and I hate saying this and I, and I, I hate saying this because I don't know if somebody in Gannon's family might ever watch this, but I, I, I hate saying this, but I'm going to say it. Who's to say she didn't, you know, shoot him or, or beat him. And then when he didn't die, she, she shot him. And then maybe she dismembered his body, which is where the knife came in. And that's how, you know, put him in a suitcase. But again, wouldn't somebody have seen her doing that, right? Or, or seen her come back with blood on her or, or some sort of blood in the truck? I mean, they haven't said that there was anything like that. So I just don't understand. It just doesn't, it's, it makes no sense to me. This whole case makes no sense. But um, anyhow, I don't know. I, I did want to go live at least and, and kind of get some, some thoughts from you all. And um, we did a Facebook live. We had a really good discussion on there. We had a lot of people that were active in the conversation and I had every intention of downloading that and uploading it to YouTube, but it won't download. I don't know why. So I wanted to go live on YouTube, give you all a chance to, you know, partake in the conversation also in case you're not following us on Facebook, but I will, I will definitely continue to update everybody um, with details. Should they come out? Like I said, you know, with a gag order, God only knows what, what we're going to find out or not find out, but I will definitely update everybody if any new information is, is given. Um, and I hope that you will subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. Um, we also did start a podcast, uh, crime 411. So you can search for that on Spotify or whatever Podbean or whatever it is that you use. Um, our Twitter is up. Our Instagram is up. Our website is up crime 411.org. So, um, you know, please definitely get involved. Uh, Jane said, I think there was a wooded area close to the Petco. You know, and I wondered that too, but God, you would think they would have checked there, right? Like that would be the first place you would think that they would check. I mean, she was at Petco twice. I just, I can't imagine that they dropped the ball that big. I think she filled, filled him and covered him. What do you mean when you say filled him? What, what do you mean, Jane? I'm curious. I know that when he, when he was, um, you know, the video that the neighbor had where Gannon was getting into the truck with her that day, the kid could barely walk. He looked like he was either in like a super amount of pain or drugged or both. Oh, killed. Okay. I, th okay. I was like, filled him. What filled him with what? Okay. Killed him. I think she killed him and covered him. <laughs> Not fill okay. Um, I just, you would think that law enforcement would have seen something, but at that point she hadn't, at that point, I don't even think she had told them she went to Petco yet. Right. So you could be right. Maybe she, you know, cause she did get the rental car then and she had it for 24 hours. Maybe she did take the rental car and go back and get his body and, and move it. Um, but at that point, where would she have hit his body? Because she was back the next day because she did that interview on local news, the one where she had her back to the camera. So she couldn't, have, it's impossible that she could have driven to Florida and back in that time. Um, so 
I, I'm just, I'm just thinking, I, I don't know. It's so weird. Maybe she drove, maybe she moved his body at that point, you know, halfway or drove, you know, five hours one way. And then when she went to South Carolina, picked him up on the way again and followed him. But at that, again, I keep going back to, wouldn't they have watched her and followed her to see what she was doing? You would think they would have. Um, the second time she went back to Petco to move, but it was in the same day that she went twice. It was within an hour that she went back to Petco. Um, that, uh, and, and that's why I thought maybe, maybe somebody, maybe she met somebody at Petco and he got in that vehicle and then she went back to make sure that it didn't come back with him or something. I don't know. I mean, I go through all these scenarios in my head, but <laughs> excuse me, it's not coronavirus, it's allergies. <laughs> um, I just keep going back to the fact that wouldn't they have been watching her? I don't know. But, but then again, she wasn't a suspect at that time, right? They had no reason to believe that maybe he hadn't run away up until, you know, a few days later, I guess. I don't know. Um, it's a, it's a very convoluted thing. And, you know, I can't even imagine law enforcement has their work cut out for them on this. I'm sure of that, um, and then if you remember, she had said, um, after they took evidence out of the house, if you all remember, she she said at that point, like, oh, by the way, uh, Gannon cut his foot in the garage on a tool because his dad does a lot of woodworking. Um, so, you know, if there was blood, that's why, because Saturday night he cut his foot in the garage and I had him sit on the car and I bandaged up his foot and, you know, whatever she said. Um, so, so she was trying to cover her tracks as she went, right? Um, it, it, it doesn't, it, everything she said has been a lie. Every single thing she has said. So um, it's just as hard to know. Uh, you said, yeah, she went back to Petco to make sure he was secure there. You mean like, like she went back to make sure that nobody drove by and saw him where she put him? Is that what you're thinking? Like, but why go back to the store itself? That's, that's the thing I don't understand. Why go back to the store? You know, I'm going to, I want to get an aerial view, like one of those Google map things to see the terrain around that Petco and see, you know, what it looks like. But again, if she had beat him to death that day, wouldn't she have had blood on her or wouldn't there have been, I mean, I don't know. It's, you know, it's just a horrible thing, no matter how you look at it. The whole situation is disgraceful and disgusting. And I hope she rots in hell and I'm sure that she will. Um, and I know that's not professional, but I really don't care. I hope she rots in hell. I hope they give her the death penalty. Um, then she gave the interview the next day and got on the road after the interview. So she parked in the parking lot at the Petco. Do you think, Jane, do you think it's possible that somebody else could have met her and taken Gannon that day, the day that she went to the Petco? Do you, I mean, do you think that's remotely possible? Because I keep going back to if she had killed him that day, and, and, and moved him that she would have had blood on her. There would have been something in the truck. I keep going back to the fact that there was nothing found on her. And it sounds like, you know, this was a, a pretty gruesome ordeal based on, you know, the evidence that they now have, unless of course that happened, you know, I don't know if, she, did she dismember his body after and put him in a suitcase? I don't know. Um, I, I just, I can't even imagine the thing that breaks my heart more than anything is trying to imagine what this poor boy went through his last moments in his life and the fear and the pain and the sadness and just everything that he must've felt. It just, it, 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 it keeps me up at night. It's absolutely horrible to even think about that. And I can't even, I mean, his parents must go through that over and over and over and over again in their head. And it, it's got to be like a hell on earth for these people. I can't even imagine what, you know, what, what that goes through their heads. They must have just, it's, it's just horrible. It really, truly is horrible. The, the, um, Jane, anything is possible. Now she did go to the car wash and clean the vehicle thoroughly in and out. Now there was a car wash, um, thing on the witness, uh, list, right? That's right. There was, um, that's a good point too that just makes me sick. Doesn't it make you sick to even think that she had to do that because of what she did? It's just disgusting. And then there was, um, on the witness list, there was Subway, like Subway Sandwich Place and Played Against Sports and Coles. And, um, you know, 
You know what? You know what? I can't can't understand like the fact that people like her, people like her who do something like this, or like the situation with Evelyn Boswell or Chris Watts, who you know killed his wife and and unborn baby and the two little girls. These people, <clears throat> they 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 do something like this, and they can actually stand there and have a conversation. And and I just can't. I mean. How do you do something like that and then just proceed with life as usual? It blows my mind how anybody is capable of that kind of evil. I, I cannot wrap my head around that, you know? And yeah, I can't even imagine what this poor little boy went through. It's 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 heartbreaking. Jane, did you see the um the video that Letitia posted to Facebook from Sunday the night before he went missing? Did you see that one? Um where she says, uh, you know, she's asking him, I'm just going to ask you, Gannon, did you do this on purpose? And I'm sorry. She said, I, I know I flipped out. And she's talking about how to, um, how to uh, replace the carpet so the landlord doesn't kick them out and that they're going to have to sell the, the couch and all. Did you see that video? Okay. So in that video, you can clearly hear that he is in physical pain. And, and like I said on the, the Facebook Live that we did earlier, the first time I heard that, the first thing I thought of was that like she beat the crap out of him, like kicked his stomach in and that he was gasping for air. That's what it sounded like to me. And then um, a lot of people said at the end of the video that they heard him saying, I'm bleeding. And I listened to it and I couldn't tell if he said that or not, but I was also like already preconditioned to try and hear that because that's what I heard was said. So I really wasn't like... Um, I didn't feel like I could give an unbiased opinion about what he said, but yes, it was very emotional too, but he sound, he sounded like he was literally on his last legs of life. He sounded like he couldn't breathe. Um, and the poor little girl, his poor little sister in that video was like hiding under a pillow, you know, as she turned the, the camera toward Gannon and, and just to God only knows what that little girl watched happen to her brother or, or the fear that she would have thinking that maybe she was next. I mean, the whole situation is, is just, it's just absolutely horrible. And I want to know where the hell Harley was when all this was happening. And why didn't she step in and do something to help? Because it's not like she was seven, she's 17, right? Why didn't, why didn't the sister, the stepsister call the cops? Why didn't some, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I guess in that regard, that makes me think that maybe she was involved or she was just afraid of her mother. But either way, if you see something like that going on in the home, how do you not call the cops? How do you not call the police and be like, hey, my mother is batshit crazy and she's just beat my stepbrother almost to death and I need somebody to come help him? Like, because she said she was home. Letitia said Harley came home from work and she was there that night, right? Um, and Jane, maybe you can maybe you can refresh my memory on something. There was supposedly the neighbor, um, Roderick, who had the video of Gannon getting in the truck with Letitia that day. Somebody had said that there was video from the night before that where Letitia and um and Harley were putting a bunch of stuff in the back of the truck and then they left for a while and came back like really late. Whatever happened that night in the basement is what mortally wounded him. Absolutely agree with you 100%. 100%. Um, and, and she posted something too. Um, but but before I go on, because I'm getting on a tangent here, do you happen to remember what was said about the video from the night before that they put a bunch of stuff in the back of the truck and then left for a while and came back and it was like after midnight? I'm wondering if maybe they um, if they drove that stuff somewhere planning to finish him off the next day or not, um, or scoping out where they could put him or something like that. But wasn't Harley with her that night, that Sunday night when they, when they left for a while late at night, or do you not know? Um, and, and, and what you said, yes, I totally agree with you. Whatever happened on that night, that Sunday night was what caused him to pass away or whatever happened the next day on the 27th without question. I agree with you. And, um, Satan, otherwise known as Letitia, had posted on Facebook and she said, um, this was not, what did she say? This was an accident, not some tragedy. And Gannon is very much alive. 
when people lie, there's usually a little bit of truth in every lie, which is why they're so good at it, because they give you just enough to make it believable. And I think that maybe it was initially an accident that she that she that she beat him. And I don't think that maybe she beat him with the intention of killing him. But I think that when she did beat him to the point that she did at that point, I think she had no option but to but in her mind, of course, not not in real life, but in a psychopath mind, she had no option other than to kill him at that point because she had beat him so severely that it was either he was going to die or she was going to get arrested for child abuse, one or the other. And I think she thought that she could hide him and get away with it. That's what I really think. Um, yeah, I'll look and see if I can find out more about the video from the Sunday night. Um, but I, I could have sworn that there was somebody that said that she and Harley had been seen the night before putting a bunch of stuff in the back of the pickup truck and that they left for a few hours and came back like after midnight. I, I, and I don't want to say for sure that that's true, but I really, really think that I remember that being the case. Um, and I think they had said that, um, that she had a shovel. Um, and again, I don't know if that's speculation or a fact, but I'm just trying to recall because, um, you know, I follow a lot of different cases. I don't want to get it confused. I know he was fine during this Sunday because he went to some kind of, yeah, they went hiking at Garden of the Gods and she had a picture with Gannon and there was a guy behind them that had a blue jacket on or something like that. And he came forward and said, yes, I remember seeing them there that day. So he was fine when they went hiking. Whatever happened, happened on Sunday night. Um, and I'm thinking, I don't know what, I don't know what could have caused somebody to get that angry with a kid to, to do that. But yeah, all the violence happened after that. Um, I don't think that, I don't think that he knocked a candle over that started a fire on the carpet. I think that she's full of crap with that. If you've ever knocked a candle over, what happens 99% of the time is that the wax goes over the flame and puts it out. Plus that's not something that's going to make you lose your mind and beat somebody to death unless, well, you're Letitia. Um, but I don't think that it was a candle. I think that that story was made up and that those text messages were sent back and forth just to um, have like a story and have like a written record of their story. But I don't believe that that was the case. Um, she said, "Did I just want to ask you, Gannon, one more time, did you do this on purpose? And I just want to know, I, I don't think she was talking about a candle. Something happened. I don't know what it was, but, but, mm -mm. and I also think that the carpet story with the candle was because there was blood on the carpet. And I think that's why she, she replaced that piece of the carpet the very next day in a hurry and came up with this stupid candle story because that she knew that they were going to ask what happened to the carpet and why she, why she changed the carpet. So that's why I think the candle story came from. Um, and then, if, yeah, I, I agree. I don't either. And then the other thing was the fact that she said he cut his foot on Saturday night in the garage and that she bandaged it up because there were tools laying around because Al does a lot of woodworking. I think that after they started asking about the carpet, she came up with that garbage story because they found, because she was worried that they found blood. So I think there was blood on the carpet. I think that he never hurt his foot in the garage. I think that all of it was just like her coming up with things spur the moment to try and cover her tracks as they uncovered her tracks and I don't think for a second that it had to do with a candle. And I really want to know what she was saying. Did you do this on purpose? Um, or maybe, I mean, maybe I, I've gone back and forth that maybe she was having an affair and Gannon caught her with someone and, and beat him and snapped because he was going to tell her his, his father. I thought maybe that could have been the case, especially since um, the dad had just left. Right. So, maybe he walked in on them in bed or something like that. And she, she snapped, um, because he was going to tell his dad, right. It, that wouldn't surprise me. I mean, she had an affair with his dad when his dad was still married to his mom. So that falls in line with her lack of morals and, and values. Right. Um, so I wonder about that. And then Maybe Harley knew she was having an affair. Maybe that's why she didn't want to say anything because then it was like, well, why didn't you mention that your mother was having an affair? Who, I'm just throwing things out there. But but he, he, something happened Sunday night and it was big enough for her to snap and it wasn't knocking over a candle. I want to know his bedroom was in the basement. I want to know where was her bedroom? Where was her bedroom? I want to know that. Um, 
And maybe there was a candle. Maybe she was having a little uh, love love fest with her little romantic candles or whatever. And maybe maybe he walked in and saw them and did knock a candle over. Maybe there was some truth to that lie. Who knows, right? Um, Jane, do you think she was having an affair? Also, another interesting thing. There were so many people that were saying that they they wondered if she was having an affair with Landon's husband, soon to be ex husband Mike. I don't know how far they live or where he was when this all happened, but just for argument's sake, let's say that were true. Could you imagine if Gannon walked in on her with his mother's husband? That could certainly cause a big thing, right? That could certainly cause a big blow up. Now you're not even with some other man. You're with my mother's husband again. So there's there's a possibility. Um, does anybody know where Mike, the Landon's husband, was when all this was going on? I, I would really, really like to know. Um, but yeah, again, it was weird that he was, he was in this Letitia Stouk support group on Facebook, you know, taking up for her saying she didn't do anything. I mean, he was like really adamant that, um, that she didn't do anything. And he friended her on Facebook not long before this happened. It's weird. It's really, really weird. So I want to find out where he was, um, when all this was going on, because I, I, I don't think she did this alone. I really, I really don't. But at the same time, you would think they would have enough evidence if he was involved in some way to arrest him too, and they haven't, so who knows? It's a very strange thing. Um, as far as as far as um, as far as the whole thing is concerned with uh, first degree premeditated murder, I, I still don't know if I if I feel like she set out to murder him from the get-go or if things got out of hand. And at that point she, she planned to murder him instead of going to get him help, which I guess is still premeditated. But when I say premeditated, I don't feel like it was like, you know, a week ahead of time, she was sitting there thinking, I'm going to kill Gannon. Like, I don't think it was that kind of premeditated situation, although I could be wrong. It's weird that he, that that has not come out yet. Yeah, it is. It is very weird. Um, I'm curious about that for sure. Um, if, if my, if my, okay, if the lady that was responsible for breaking up the marriage of my wife and her her ex-husband was the last person to see my stepson alive, I wouldn't be on Facebook saying how great and innocent she was. I would be saying she was a horrible wench and that she was probably responsible and I'd be having a lot of questions that I'd wanna ask this person. But instead he was on there saying she was great, she didn't do anything. Why was he not with his wife standing by her side when she was trying to find her son? You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make sense. Why would you be standing on, standing side by side with the stepmother who is the last person to see your stepson missing when your wife, even if it's your soon to be ex-wife, is standing there with her son missing, trying to find her son? It doesn't make any sense. Premeditation can be formed in, that's true. Yeah. Premeditation can be formed in seconds. So again, like I think to that point, Jane, it makes sense that like, she beat him so severely that at that moment she planned to kill him because that was the only thing that she could think of to do to get herself out of the situation. And in that case, yeah, that would be premeditated at that point. Um, but I think that she, I think that it started off where she just snapped and things got exponentially out of control very quickly. Um, either way she deserves to rot in hell. I hope that I really hope they give her the death penalty and the DA who is prosecuting this. He's great. He seems like he really is great. And I think he, he wants her to um, never see the light of day just as much as we all do. So I, I like that guy. And I think he's, he's definitely on it. But uh, anyhow, I'm going to, I'm going to put this live. Uh, I'm going to, to sum it up and, and whatnot. I've got dogs barking. You can probably hear them. <laughs> and, uh, I've been, I've been on live for like two and a half hours, um, at this point. So, um, Leo, you said the word keyword planned. Yes. Jane, are you on our Facebook group, the crime 411 Facebook group? If you're not, I hope you'll join it because, um, I, I like your thought process and, and it's, it's, I enjoy interacting with you. So if you're not on our Facebook group, there's the Crime 411 page. And then we have a private group, Crime 411 discussions for like more like speculations and conversations like that. But if you're not on there, please join. Um, I, I would definitely like to, to you know, talk with you again. Um, needed to talk. Thanks. Okay. Well, before I go, I want to just ask you if there's anything you want to talk about with this case. Um, 
that, you know, that I haven't covered. Um, I'm the one doing a lot of the talking, but is there anything you wanted to say before I, before I close this out? It's been a, it's been an emotional roller coaster. You know, the whole reason I started crime 411 was because of Gannon. And for some reason, this kid, I don't know what it was. He just stole my heart from the second that I saw the, his picture and heard this story. And, um, you know, it's just, I don't know. There's some, some stories that just torment you more than others in the news. No rhyme or reason behind it. Right. But for some reason, this one just pulled my heartstrings and just tore me to shreds. And I was so, so hoping and praying that he would be found alive. And it's just been crushing and devastating. And um, I used to work at T-Mobile um, back when my son was two. I had to switch jobs because I got a divorce and became a single mom. And they used to do like these crazy shift bids and your schedule would change every six months and you didn't know what it was going to be. And with a two-year-old and no family around, it was like, there was no way I could do that. But um, but I saw on on Landon's Facebook page that she worked at T-Mobile also out in Colorado or Texas or wherever, and um, and I had had a, I had saved the cell phone number of a friend of the CEOs there um, from years ago, and I didn't really know him or anything like that. We just had a conversation one time, and I, I messaged him and I said, Dave, I said, you know, is there anything you can do to help her because she, you know, she can't afford to not be at work, but this woman, her son is, is like missing, you know, and they took care of her and they paid her for a month to, uh, to search for her son. And I messaged him when, when the press conference was going on that they, um, that they were charging Letitia with first degree murder. And I was, and I said, you know, I'm, you know, just wanted to let you know, you know, that, that, um, his stepmother had, had killed him. And, you know, um, if there, and he, and he, and he just said, let me step in here. Um, and I will, I will, I will help her. I'll take care of everything. He said, um, you know, I can't even imagine. So on, I am very, very, very glad to know that from a work standpoint that she has the support of her company. And, uh, and I just wanted to, to mention that because so many companies these days, especially like these big giant companies, they don't care about people, right? You're a number, you, you're, you're there to make money for their bottom line. And, um, and Dave and uh, John Ledger, which is the CEO of T-Mobile, they are some of the nicest people and some of the greatest people that you could ever imagine working for. And, um, and they, they have such a, they both have big hearts. And I, I just wanted to, to, to point that out too, because, you know, um, in the darkness, there is, there is some light in some situations and in this situation, you know, um, those people really stepped up and, and, uh, you know, and, and allowed God to use them as a tool to, to help the family in this time. And I just wanted to make sure that people were aware of that because there are still good people out there. Um, and yeah, I, I cried about this all day too. I, when I first read it, I threw up and my five-year-old was home. And then I was, I didn't want to cry in front of him, but, you know, how me explain to a five-year-old that I'm crying because a little boy was found in a suitcase, you know, after, you know, you can't have that conversation with a kid. Um, so I went in the shower and I cried it out in the shower and his dad picked him up for the night so that I could just kind of, you know, um, but, uh, and yeah, if, if there's any peace, you know, it's that he's in heaven now. And I know from the press conference, the original press conference that, uh, Landon spoke at where she was saying, you know, Gannon is everybody's hero now, not just my hero, but everybody's hero. My God, I'm, I'm, I, it's heartbreaking. I can't even, it's hard to have this conversation. Um, and she said, I know where he is. Um, and, and, you know, you could tell that they have a very strong faith. So I'm, I'm so glad that they have that because I trying to go through this at that time, you know, um, I lost a niece when she was almost four months old and the, 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 you know, the, the human body and, and the human brain can only actually process so much at one time before it just shuts down. Um, and so kind of knows what these people are going through right now. I can't even imagine what they're going through. And I wish I could just give this woman, her, her, his mom, like the biggest hug right now. And I don't even know her and just tell her that I love her and that, you know, people love her. Um, but I want justice too. I want justice. I want her to get the death penalty for what she's done. Um, I absolutely want justice. And, and, and the saddest part about it, Jane, is that 
even the highest level of justice in this world will never bring him back. And so, you know, it's, um, it's just terrible. It's, it's just so sad, but, um, you know, I guess we, we continue to pray for his family for healing for them. And, you know, it's just, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for, for the way that T-Mobile has reacted and, and helped the family. They are amazing people. Like I said, and uh, the fact that they did that, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised at all. Like I only met John, the CEO twice, like real brief. Um, but we had some funny interactions on Twitter and stuff. And what I knew of him, I could tell, you know, this is somebody who really, really cares about people. And he has never looked at his employees, how many hundreds of individual people with families. And so when, when they stepped up and helped her, I was like, thank God that there is some sort of light in the darkness right now, you know, but, um, but Jane, please, um, like I said, and whoever else happens to watch, if you're not already part of our private group on Facebook, the crime 411 group, please join. Um, and, uh, also, you know, follow us on YouTube and feel free to message me at email crime 411 at gmail.com um, regarding any of the cases that we're covering, or if there's some, a case that you're aware of, that's not really getting media attention, but, but needs it, you know, in order to, to find somebody that's missing or whatever the case may be, you feel free to send that to us as well. And we'll, we'll do our best to get, you know, the, the news out to people and hopefully mainstream media might pick up on some of those stories too. So, um, I hope you all have a good Friday night as best as you can. Jane, um, thank you for, for the conversation tonight. I, I needed it as much as you did after, after the news today. And um, if you need to talk, you can always message me on Facebook too through the Crime 411 group, okay? All right, everybody, have a good rest of the night. And thank you again for tuning into Crime 411.